Notice, notice Kathy's Memorial Day paraphernalia. <laughs> So, I'm glad there's a very relaxed congregation. So nice to have a relaxed congregation. All right. Woo! You can hear me. Yay. Woo! Yay. So, today is Trinity Sunday, and we celebrate each aspect of the Trinity Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. This morning, um, one of our graduates from, she is a seminary graduate, she's actually ordained, but she can't, went to Nichols Church when she was a little girl. And she sent me a funny thing about Trinity. So it's like these two Irish men, old, like in, you know, like in world, asking St. Patrick to explain the Trinity in simple language so you can understand. And St. Patrick says, well, it's like water. Water is vapor and ice and liquid. And then one of the um, Irish uh, peasants says, oh, that was a heresy, and he quotes which heresy. <laughs> and then St. Patrick says, well, it's like the sun radiating light and heat and something else. And then they, there was another heresy, and he went on and on, and all these Irish peasants told St. Patrick that's a heresy. So St. Patrick said, well, then, it's just a mystery. <laughs> yeah, that's good. He said it's true. So Richard Rohr, who I listen to a lot, and you know, describes the Trinity as a flow of relationship. An interbeing flow from one to the other and back again in a circle and a dance and in relationship. And he reminds us that sometimes our greatest dis ease is our disconnection to each other. And when we are able to connect and be one in this flow, then we have union. Oh, isn't that the word for yoga too? Union, oneness, unity. So all the great wisdom traditions remind us how connected we are, how we're all one, and how we can join the flow and the dance of the Trinity and relate to each other and become light, bringing light, being enlightened, illuminating, and yeah. Just radiating joy. For well, we are all one. So this morning we're doing a bunch of different things. The bulletin today, you'll notice, is beer, because this is what I use for leaving home usually. This is the format I use when we meet out in the woods. <laughs> and it's very simple. One of and we usually would be reading them the song, but I added that for your comfort. What I wanted to teach you before we started, we're going to have a reading called The Master of the World is a reading, and we're, we have four readers that will stand uh, around the sanctuary, and while we're reading, Vicki's going to be playing a tune, and then after we're done reading, we're going to sit down, we're going to do a chant. We'll probably sing it like four, five, 25, 30 times. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Vicky picks. <laughs> and here's the two. And 
of God, whatever name in Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy array. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. In his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I didn't put it in. So, let me tell you about what we're going to do next. There was a Jesuit priest. Let me find it. I have his date. He was born in 1881 in France, and he lived until Easter Sunday in 1955. He was a stretcher bearer in World War II. I mean, sorry, in World War I. And he witnessed the horror of the war, which changed.
again that they meet the moving sheet of fire, the living surface of the earth wakes and once again begins the fearful travel. I will place on my pattern, O oh God, the harvest to be won by this renewal of labor. Into my chalice I shall pour all the sap which is to be pressed out this day from the earth's fruit. My chalice and my pattern are the steps of a soul laid widely open. All the forces which in a moment will rise up from every corner of the earth and converge upon the spirit. Grant me the remembrance and distant presence of all those whom the light is now awakening to a new day. One by one, Lord, I see and I love all those whom you have given me to sustain and chart my life. One by one, I also remember those who make up that other beloved family, which has gradually surrounded me, its unity fashioned out of the most transparent elements for the synergies of the heart, of scientific research, and of thought. And one by one, more vaguely, Yet all exclusively, I call before me the whole vast and anonymous army of living humanity. Those who surround me and support me, who I do not know them. Those who come and those who go, above all, those who in field, office, laboratory, and factory, through their vision of truth or despite their error, truly believe in the progress of earthly reality, and who today will again take up their impassioned pursuit of the light. This restless multitude refused the laborers, the immensity of which terrifies us. This ocean of humanity whose slow, monotonous wave of flows trouble the hearts of even those faith is most firm. It is to this feet that I thus desire all the fibers of my being should respond. All the things in the world to which this day will bring increase. All those that will diminish. All those too that will die. All of them, Lord. I try to gather into my arms so as to hold them out to you in offering. This is the material of my sacrifice, the only material you desire. Once upon a time, men took into the temple the first fruits of their harvest, the flower of their flocks. But the offering you really want, the offering you mysteriously need each day to appease your hunger, to stake your thirst, is nothing less than the growth of the world born over unwant, out, unwant in the stream of universal becoming. Receive, O oh Lord, this all-embracing host which your whole creation, moved by your magnetism, offered you at this dawn on a new day. This bread, our toil, is of itself I know, but an immense fragmentation. This wine, our pain, is no more. I know then a draw that dissolves. Yet in the very depths of this formless mass you have implanted, and this I am sure of, for I sense it, a desire, irresistible, hailing, which makes us cry out, believer and unbeliever alike, Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. I invite you all to join that response. Lord, make us one. Lord, Lord, make us one.
when we do this at um, our worship time, we ask for sharing. And um, I know um, a lot of you are uncomfortable with sharing anything except prayer concerns, but we'll do that too. <laughs> um, but I ask a question about the relationship. Unity and the sacredness of everything. So we have microphones that you know Kathy can pass around the microphone or whoever who wants to share. Oh, Carol has one too. Great. So don't be shy. Anything you say is good. I'll say something. Thank you. Hopefully not too emotional. But yesterday I finished reading the book Brain Shark by Gandhi Gupta, who is one of the national medical correspondents. And a lot of the end of the book was about Alzheimer's and the mistakes that families make and the good things that families do. So even though Susie did not have our my sister Susie did not have Alzheimer's, she had a lot of neurological um, problems. And so her memory wasn't that good, but we had so many wonderful people who unified together. Her um, friends can't be happy, um, her daughters, my sister, my brother, neighbors and friends. The woman had more friends than anybody I ever met in my life. <laughs> and so, I got to the point where I called it Team Susie. But when I read that last emotional chapter in Sanjay's book, I just thought how blessed we were to have that unity. Because as you look around for many people who are in long-term care, um, like Linda Banford, who so badly wanted to come home, this home after eight years, but now feels like she doesn't have any, um, any support system at all. She only has a son. Um, Sally Carter and Ken Rogers saying son, you can't make new old friends. And I was thinking of Linda when, you know, she, she just lost that whole unity, community that she had. So if you have time and you'd like to stop down and visit her, um, she would love this. And that was long and I'm sorry. That's wonderful. Thank you, Peggy. Yes. Um, on July, on Wednesday, our Greek group is going to be starting up again. And it's for anyone who has suffered any kind of loss, not just the death of someone you love, but any kind of loss. Please join our group. It's going to be a lunch at 1 o'clock Wednesday, June 9th at Ground Base. And please call either Janet Stengel or me and just let us know if, we're coming so, if you're coming so we can give Ground Base an estimate of how many people will be there. And it's another kind of coming together unity. Yes, thank you. June 9th, great group at Ground Base, 1 p.m. You can do prayer concerns too, you if you have more. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Brenda Castle's husband Paul um, lost his uncle Joe. And they had Brenda and her husband have had a lot of loss in their family, um, friends and I'm sorry, friends and family. So they they really they really are grieving in, in many ways. So if you would keep um, Brenda and Paul Castle and their friends and family in your prayers, I appreciate it. Brenda and Paul Castle, thank you. I'm going to Ohio tomorrow <clears throat> to babysit my grandchildren while my son TJ 
stitches and my daughter-in-law works from home. So I'm asking for traveling mercies because I don't know how the traffic's going to be on Memorial Day weekend. Traveling mercies for traveling. I would just ask some prayers and your thoughts for the state of New York as we're negotiating contracts with 50,000 people who've been out been without contracts for over two years. And there are also concerns at the School for the Deaf and concerns for staffing. So just keep all of us in your prayers, please. Let us be at prayer. God, we give you thanks for all of creation that is all of our relations. Help us to live in unity and in harmony. Even with those we disagree with, we especially pray for the New York State our teachers as they negotiate contracts and for the Rome School of the Deaf and for all teaching communities that work with our children to help them grow into citizens that care for one another, give them wisdom, encourage, and insight. We ask that you be with those who grieve, to comfort them, to uphold them, to strengthen them, especially with Paul and Brenda and their whole family. Help us to be caring units, caring in unity, and we're grateful, Linda, that she gets back into connection with those that she needs to thrive. And I pray for traveling mercies. Please give us traveling mercies this weekend and all weekends. Give us wisdom as we drive and comfort us. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
by Mary Oliver. When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locusts, equally the beech, the oaks, and the pines, they give us such hints of gladness. I am, I would almost say that they save me and daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself in which I have goodness and discernment and never hurry through the world, but walk slowly and bow often. Around me the trees stir in their leaves and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches. And they call again, it's simple, they say. And you too have come into this world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light, and to shine. Let's see if we can sing this song. I always have trouble with the time. We have so